The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, J.D. Angelus. J.D. Angelus. D. Angelus. Did I get that right, J.D.? Um, in the studio with me is Brad White, compounding pharmacist and vice president of Medicine Center Pharmacy, and our very special guest, Maria Griffin, nurse practitioner and Mercy Stroke Center coordinator. Good morning, Maria, and welcome to the show. Good morning. I guess Thanks welcome for having back me. The- She's got good info to share so we can all be more aware. Um, today, in May alone, some 65,000 Americans could experience a stroke and may be unaware they're even at risk. And less than a third will arrive to the emergency room within three hours, which is the optimal time period for better outcomes. May marks National Stroke Awareness Month, and this year the spotlight is on the 10 modifiable risk factors that account for 90% of strokes globally. Hypertension remains the single most important modifiable risk factor, accounting for nearly 48% of strokes. With 8 in 10 people experiencing their first stroke, having hypertension, getting your blood pressure checked is an important first step in controlling your risk. During National Stroke Awareness Month, the National Stroke Association is urging you to look at your stroke risk factors and pledge to make at least one change to reduce reduce your stroke risk. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program is also available on our podcast, which you can download from the App Store in your smartphone. Uh, You can look for us in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anywhere. If you have questions you'd like to ask today, you can post them up on our radio show um, Facebook feed, or you can give us a call here at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, Maria, um, introduce yourself and explain your role as nurse practitioner and Mercy Stroke Center coordinator. My name is Maria Griffin. I'm a nurse practitioner. I've been a nurse practitioner for 12 years now, um, eight of those in private practice neurology, and then the last uh, four-plus years at Mercy Medical Center um, overseeing the stroke program there. Uh, At Mercy, I deal a lot with patient education, family education, uh, as well as staff education about strokes. And just we tr- strive to give the best care possible to have the best outcomes for our patients. How large is your department? So we have a dedicated stroke unit, uh, and then we have a backup floor where our strokes go in case that first one's full. But we have, you know, our emergency room staff, our nurses on the floor, nurses in the ER. They're just critical. We're all a big team. In addition, we have physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy that all work together. So you are in the emergency room. You're essentially waiting for the patient being brought in. When a stroke alert is called, if I am indeed at work, yes, I go down for those. Is there always somebody there? Um, We have uh, stroke-trained nurses, and our emergency room physicians are all, of course, trained in uh, stroke as well as our neurology staff. Okay. Why don't we start with the basics and and explain what a stroke is and, and And what happens when you're having a stroke? So a stroke occurs uh, whenever there's an interruption in the normal blood flow uh, to the brain tissues. That can happen in a couple of ways. No other parts of the body, just the brain. No, you. so traditionally when you hear the word stroke, we're talking about the brain. Um, In rare cases, you can have a spinal cord infarct or a splenic infarct, other parts of the body. But traditionally when the term is used, we're talking about the brain. We don't call call it like a... A blocked artery in the leg, we don't call that a stroke or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how common are strokes in, in um, s- s- things that are, are um, something about uh, that a listener should be concerned about? Absolutely. Um, people should be concerned about stroke. About 800,000 Americans every year suffer a stroke. Um, at Mercy last year, we had over 640, uh, roughly 646 stroke admissions last year. Anything from a minor stroke to, to a massive? Correct. Anything okay. from you're going home uh, the same day to um, considering hospice services. Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay, Maria, how would you think that all of the education and modern technologies would affect the outcome of strokes? I would like to think they'd be dropping, but it sounds like sounds like it's on the rise. 
certainly stroke is very prevalent still. Um, if you look at the actual numbers, less people are having stroke. Um, and that's mainly due to increased prevention and um, st- more stringent blood pressure and cholesterol um, control uh, guidelines. But, yes, uh, stroke is dropping, but we still see so much of it. Hmm. Okay, so how about this? Are there different types of strokes? There are. Um, the two main categories of stroke include ischemic strokes, where an artery in the brain becomes blocked suddenly whether that's due to plaque buildup or a clot. And then the other type of stroke is where the artery in the brain bursts and spills blood out where it doesn't belong, and that's called a hemorrhagic stroke. I often describe it to patients as, you know, pipes. You know, everybody's got water pipes at home. The one type your pipe gets clogged, the other type your pipe bursts open. Hmm. Okay, how about some warning signs? What can we watch for? So the most common symptoms of stroke include sudden numbness or weakness down one side of the body. And it it doesn't have to be the entire side of the body. Sometimes it's just weakness or numbness of the face, the arm, or the leg. Many times it's all of the above. Any sudden change in your ability to speak, whether it's slurred speech, trouble getting words out. Um, You may look confused to family um, if you're having trouble talking. Vision changes can be a symptom of stroke, whether it's double vision, loss of vision, um, or a sudden change in balance, sudden change in coordination. And then with that hemorrhagic stroke, they may have those symptoms. Um, They also may have a a horrendous headache, like somebody hit them with a baseball bat kind of headache. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about risk factors. Mm. All right. What are the risk factors for stroke? There are many, many risk factors. Um... You know, high blood pressure is certainly the number one. Uh, Diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, uh, blockages in the arteries around the heart, which is coronary artery disease, so folks that have had heart attacks or stents or a bypass surgery, Um, carotid artery disease, the the list goes on and on. Atrial fibrillation, heart failure, clotting disorders, and then, of course, the some of the bad things that we do to ourselves, if you will, the smoking, excessive alcohol intake, drug use, and sedentary lifestyle. When we first opened on West Tuscarora Street years ago, we started doing blood pressure screenings. Mm -hmm. Like 19, this was 1977, 78, something like that. And we had massive amounts of people coming to us because nobody else was doing it. Uh And now, of course, there's many, many places, you, you know, that you can have your blood pressure checked, or, and churches are doing it, and, 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 you know, the clinics, we have more clinics. We didn't have, really didn't have any clinics mm-hmm. back then. We had hospitals, and that was it. So you didn't stroll into the hospital emergency room just to get your blood pressure checked. So we did find in that time, in, in that uh, two, three, four, you stretched the area when we were pretty much the only people doing it, we found a lot of people with high blood pressure. I don't doubt it. Now, today... Um, What's the picture today? Are we still having tons of people that are running around with high blood pressure and, and they don't know it? Um, I still see um, a, a great number of patients that get admitted at the hospital and they haven't seen a, a family physician for decades. Yeah. And certainly those patients, they come in and they're like, how did I have a stroke? I'm healthy. And then... <laughs> While they're admitted, we, we diagnose them with high blood pressure. They have hmm. diabetes they didn't know they had. They've got cholesterol numbers off the charts, you know. So, unfortunately, some of the people that um, aren't getting those routine screenings um, on a regular basis, and they feel well, but all of these things are happening in their body at, that are ultimately taking a toll. The Rotary Club just did a screening with, with you folks, Mercy, mm-hmm. Mercy and, and we had a pretty big crowd. And it was amazing some of the things they discovered. Um, just a lot, you're right, a lot of people just don't go to the doctor. Oh, I'm okay, you know, I don't need a doctor, you know, I'm healthy, you know. Mm-hmm. I eat three burgers a day, you know, I'm okay. <laughs> 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 What's wrong with that, you know? <laughs> okay. All right, well, you gave us some warning signs um, of a stroke. If, um, if our listeners see one of their loved ones are experiencing some of these signs or symptoms, uh, what is the best step to get them to the hospital? Please call 911. Um, If you're concerned that your loved one is having a stroke, call the paramedics. That's what they're trained for. Um, They live for that adrenaline rush of bringing in somebody that's having a major medical event. 
um, they would much rather transport that than somebody with a rash any day of the week. Um, so um, when patients come in by ambulance, they, they get priority in the emergency department. They call us ahead and tell us, hey, we're bringing in a stroke patient, and, you know, we activate our stroke team. And so that way we're standing there waiting as that stroke patient arrives. If the paramedics feel that, you know, this is a potential patient that may receive, um, you know, the clot buster drug, Alteplase, or some other um, important medical treatment, please don't drive yourself. Um, <laughs> heaven forbid your symptoms get worse yeah. while driving. We've had that happen a couple times where um, the police end up pulling over the patient Forever. that's, um, you know, all over the road, and then the police thankfully recognize that the patient's <clears throat> not intoxicated and summon the medics to bring them in the rest of the way. Hmm. Okay, well, during the introduction, we mentioned that National Stroke Association is challenging each of us to pledge to change one risk factor that we have for strokes. So we encourage our listeners to stop by the Medicine Center Pharmacies this month and ask our, one of our pharmacists for a free blood pressure check. So stop in the pharmacies, and we'd be happy to check your blood pressure. Um, if you don't know your number, I think it would be a really good idea to have a baseline of what your blood pressure is. And um, it's one of the undiagnosed risk factors for strokes. So stop in and uh, let us help you find out what your blood pressure is. So there are risk factors that we can control, okay? Uh, modify, change, you know, do better, all that sort of thing. Where are we at? When it comes to obesity, we're, we're not doing a great job. Yeah. Um, all the new blood pressure guidelines that came out um, really have an emphasis on lifestyle modifications. Um, and depending on how high your blood pressure is, you know, encouraging the lifestyle modifications before um, initiating medications, um, it's my observation that despite uh, in continued encouragement to exercise and lead healthy lifestyles and um, diet, that's one of the areas we really fall short on. You, people just don't get out and exercise like they need to. We've got to take a break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T-A-P-O-N-I-T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up, and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. 
Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart caring for you and about you. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing the signs of a stroke with Maria Griffin. Have a question, give us a call at 330-450-1480. So we were talking about um, risk factors. Um, What about uh, risk factors that, that may be unique to women? So women have hormones. I'm sure that's not a surprise that men don't have. (laughs) We do. uh, (laughs) um, So some of those hormones, especially if we're taking hormone replacement or oral contraceptives, birth control pills, those can increase our risk for clotting. Um, But women are at a little bit increased risk for stroke, um, especially during pregnancy, um, which can increase uh, the risk for clotting during pregnancy. And since women tend to live longer than men, more women have strokes than men. So Mm -hmm. smoking, oral contraceptives, bad bad situation. A terrible combination. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So we know that African Americans have a higher risk of heart disease, but but what about a stroke? Do they have a higher risk of stroke? They do. Um, African Americans and... Indians are at American Indians are at increased risk for stroke compared to Caucasians. African American African Americans tend to have an increased risk because they're much more likely to have hypertension, high blood pressure than a Caucasian. Um, they're more likely to have diabetes as well, and many of the um, medications that were that we've had on the market for a very very long time, they were studied on mainly a Caucasian group. And um, so we need more studies of how these medications, especially the new meds that are coming out, how they work on African Americans. So this is a, is a genetic thing, correct? It's not a. It's also a lifestyle thing. Um, African Americans, uh, as a culture, their food it tends to be more fried and fatty than like <clears throat> a. Uh, uh, Chinese and Koreans, they don't eat hardly any fried foods. Yeah. Hmm. Curious. Okay, what about babies and children? Can they have strokes? Mm, they can. Um, I don't typically see that at Mercy. Um, uh, we rarely see pediatric stroke there. Of course, we have a great uh, asset in Akron, a great hospital there. But um, babies, children can have strokes. Many times it's related to um, congenital problems, things that they were born with, maybe a heart malformation or um, uh, in the brain they have a, a tangle of blood vessels that they were born mm. with that. Mm. And then, of course, prenatal complications, things that happen during childbirth can increase the risk for stroke. Sure. All right, well, that's interesting. Does that differ in adults? So from the maybe the genetic anomalies you just mentioned – for children is we mentioned high blood pressure and we mentioned obesity. What's some, what are some other risk factors for we adults besides smoking and obesity? Um, atrial fibrillation is a big risk factor that many don't have. A, it's not even on their radar. It's an irregular heartbeat that as we age becomes more and more common, especially in those folks over the age of 80. And so I encourage patients, if you feel any pounding in your chest or any flip-flopping of your heart, um, certainly bring that to the attention of your doctor. Um, atrial fibrillation is something that tends to come and go, and if your doctor doesn't hear it right then and there when they're listening to your heart, um, they may not be aware of that. So bring it to their attention. I had a patient once describe it to me as they were having a spell. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so that is interesting that it isn't a consistent a consistent theme. So don't overlook those things that seem a little strange. Can we um, jump back to the children for a second? Sure. All right. Children are being brought up on all different sorts of diet compared to what I had when I was a kid. I mean, you ate what was on the table. That's it. You know, you didn't get anything else because <laughs> there wasn't anything else, you know. So so now they're consuming 
and, you know, probably as many fatty foods as, as, as some of the abusive adults, <laughs> okay, that abuse their diet. What's, is there a, is there a, um, what am I trying to get to here, an age area? My, maybe they've been on the earth 10 years and they've consumed fair amounts of fatty food. And is, is there any factor, any time frame in the average child's life where there's more strokes? Um, children are, that have strokes, it's typically more in the first year or so of life. Okay. Um, as they get older, certainly you can have pediatric stroke related to traumas or um, if the child has cancer, which increases the risk for clotting and increases the risk for stroke. Um, I know that uh, in recent years there has been a push for uh, pediatricians to start screening children for high cholesterol, which is just very interesting to me. Lord knows that whenever I was a child, uh, that wasn't even on. Thought about. Exactly. Tell us what a TIA is. So TIA stands for transient ischemic attack. It's a fancy way of saying a mini-stroke. Um, TIAs have the exact same symptoms as a stroke, so that sudden numbness, weakness, trouble talking, vision changes, balance coordination trouble. But the symptoms are usually brief, typically last less than an hour or so. Um, the textbook says they can last up to 24 hours, but truly in practice, um, TIA symptoms last less than an hour. And then there's no lasting damage on the brain. Hmm. Okay. Current treatment options. What is? What are you and your team? What do they do for a patient? So, patients that the reason why um, we really encourage patients to know the stroke signs and symptoms and to come to the emergency room immediately is there's a very powerful clot buster drug called Altaplace that can be given to some patients that arrive to the hospital in the very few first hours of a stroke. It needs to be given within the first four and a half hours that the patient was last known to be perfectly well. Um, and it's a remarkable drug that can bust open the clot and restore blood flow back to the brain, um, lessening the damage in a portion of the patients that do receive it. So, maybe a dumb question, but where do you inject it? It's given through an IV. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and you run it for how long? So, um portion of the drug is given via a bolus, so we push it slowly over a minute into the IV, and then the rest goes in over the next hour. Okay. Success rate? I don't know that there's a success rate, if you will. <laughs> the studies say that about a third of patients that receive the drug, whenever you look at them a couple of months down the road, they're much less likely to require Cane's walkers and much more likely to be ambulating independently. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, bottom of the hour, time for the news. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. 
Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. The Half Off and Out by Store has been reloaded. Lots of new furniture from a major department store. Also, several pharmacy inventories have just been brought in from a large drug chain. Also, our adult diaper inventory has been increased dramatically. Don't miss these super values. You will regret it. Everything is half off or discounted more. See photos on Facebook or on our website, halfoffhotbuys.com. Half Off Hot Buys Store, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Brad and I are talking about stroke awareness with Maria Griffin. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Okay, before the break, you started to tell us about some treatment options for a stroke. Um, do you have something, some other things you'd like to add about what you do to help patients that are going through this challenging uh, situation? So the other reason why we really encourage um, early treatment is because... There, besides alteplase, not everybody's a candidate for alteplase therapy. Uh, that's the clot buster drug. Um, if there is a clot in one of the major arteries it's in a, and it's in a location that one of the neurointerventionalists feels that they may be able to get to, um, we do transfer these patients to some of the larger um, stroke centers up in the Cleveland area um, to, for that procedure. Unfortunately, it's not available here in the Stark County, but um, certainly... It's uh, dramatic um, to be able to hear some of these patients that we send who are near death and then to know that the clot's removed and they have a great outcome. So what's the next move if you miss that four and a a half hours, you said? So the um, alteplase therapy can be given out to four and a half hours in um, a select group of patients. The thrombectomy, where they actually go in and remove the clot, New guidelines came out last year that that can be considered in some patients up to 24 hours from the time wow. they were last known to be well. There's a whole laundry list of uh, criteria for those patients, but and that window certainly was extended last year with our new guidelines. Did I recently hear that that, that process can be solved or, or done with a catheter in the brain or... Right. They go in like a heart, you know, at, like, like they're a doing a heart cath, cath if you will. Mm-hmm. Most patients seem to know what um, that process is. So that's why I tend to describe it in that manner. And they do. They take a catheter up into the brain, and then they deploy what's called a stent retriever. kind of looks like the um, spring in your pen, if you will, and they let it sit there for a minute or two so it can adhere to that clot, and then they mm-hmm. gradually remove it Pull back it out. out. I make it sound so easy, but of course it's not near that <laughs> easy. Well, well, the veins are, are, are hmm. very small in the, in the brain, right? I mean, uh-huh. there's no big aortas running through the brain. No, it's a very delicate hmm. procedure, and that's why there's very few physicians that are trained with that level of skill. And, and wow. you don't do that here? Is Unfortunately, it's not available in Stark County, no. Okay. <laughs> so we have to go to Cleveland for mm-hmm. that one of the Cleveland Clinic f- facilities or, hmm. you know, up in the Akron area, the facilities there. Wow. Well, so, what kind of challenger, challenges do the stroke sufferers face? I'm sure there's many. There are many. Um, depression is very common, even in our patients that may not have a big mobility issue um, and can return to their normal life. Depression and anxiety can be an issue because of worry about an, another stroke in the future. Mobility concerns, cognitive changes occur with stroke, communication. And if you have trouble communicating with somebody, certainly that mm. that can really um, take a yeah. toll. I have a friend who had a stroke a little while ago. and He just, we have some very common interests, and, and uh, he'll just sit there and he gets mad at himself because he can't retrieve um, 
something, that, a piece of something that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And he'll sit there and, and kind of, you can see that, that he's really disgusted with himself and why can't I find that in my brain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do people regain their independence following a stroke? Um, most patients that suffer stroke do gradually improve with time. Um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy are critical to help speed that process along. And um, we have those uh, services available at Mercy, of course, to our patients that are admitted. But then after the hospitalization, outpatient services for therapy are available as well. And then, of course, good old prayer helps tremendously. Sounds like a uh, marathon, not a sprint. You got it. Well, there has to be multiple <coughs> kinds of rehabilitation provided by the hospital. I mean, speech is one thing. Mm-hmm. M- movement is another thing, and I'm sure there are other issues. Mm-hmm. But how do we handle that? So Mercy offers physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Um, they have a great driver rehab program, too, mm-hmm. um, Good old-fashioned, uh, you know, you sit down with a driver's ed instructor, if you will, one of our certified occupational therapists, and th- she will provide an independent evaluation of the stroke victim's uh, driving capabilities and help to determine whether it's safe for that patient to be on the road or that not. seems like kind of a tough one. You have a mental issue. You have a, you have a, I don't know what the, how would you Motor call skills. Motor skills, skills, yeah. yeah motor mm-hmm. skills, that sort of thing. Um and that service is offered for even patients that have other neurologic diseases or um, other mobility issues besides stroke. They, that service is offered. I, mean, I, I go to Louisville almost daily on, through this road, and, and instead of being an intersection road like this, it's like this. Mm-hmm. And you cannot, without crooking your neck, it's almost sticking it out the window, you cannot see what's coming at you if they're coming at you on one of the crossover lanes. So to me, that would be an extremely difficult um, process to bring a driver back to, you you know, that sort of a traffic pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, I mean, have you sat through those driver's training courses? (laughs) I have not sat through those driver's training courses um, in recent years. Of course, back when I was 16, I did, but... No, not in recent years. So you're not looking, you're not checking out your own therapy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. My husband critiques my driving enough. <laughs> I see. Okay. Oh, dear. <laughs> what about, um, do you have some support services for family members who are helping loved ones go through stroke? We do. We have two different support groups, one down in Tuscarawas County, one in Stark County. Um, the one in Stark County actually just changed its location um, to Bethel Church. And they meet on the third Tuesday of each month uh, at 6.30. And then the one down in Tuscaroras County, they meet on the first Wednesday of the month at 2 o'clock at the Mercy Health Center. Can you give our listeners an idea of what might go on at a meeting like that to help patients? Do you, like, you probably have a speaker. You probably talk about some challenges. And it's a great networking for many of our um, patients and families that have suffered stroke. Uh, it's nice for some of them to talk to somebody who went through it before and can offer tips. You know, this is how we got through it. and Or this is maybe for somebody, something as simple as um, how do you put on your deodorant, you know, whenever you can't move your arm. You know, and they can offer each other tips, hmm. and it's a great support network for them. Hmm. I guess it's kind of humbling when you have to relearn how to do things that you've known how to do for years and took for granted. Exactly. That would be very challenging. I would think physical therapy is a big play in this process, regardless of what sort of stroke you had. Mm-hmm. It or is. How severe it was. Hmm. And following up with physicians um, after you um, have a stroke or even before you have a stroke, hopefully they'll help to prevent you from having a stroke. Um, your primary care physician is so critical in that, not only the recovery process, but also the prevention process. Well, you mentioned that you've seen patients that haven't been to a physician in decades. <laughs> yes. So I guess we should encourage our listeners to make sure that don't be afraid of the doctor. Go once a year, get your annual wellness checkup. It's kind of like, you know, you're taking it in your car, you're making sure you get the oil changed and stuff. You want to make sure you can highlight any problems before you unfortunately find out you have one. Mm-hmm. So, What about, I don't know, I guess... There's a lot of people taking a lot of prescription drugs, okay? 
and we are penalized, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but with individuals with diabetes that they they have to be on a, a statin, and I forget actually what the other product is. Ace inhibitor. ACE inhibitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the standard of care for the patients to prevent them to come see you in the hospital for a stroke risk or other risk would be those certain medications they feel are helping you prevent those problems. So, and it's difficult. I mean, there isn't any way we can tell if this is really working. This is a this is a force from down our throats from Medicare and mm-hmm. you know some of the other insurance companies. So, can you read this situation? Well, and one of the things that I see is so often they are getting their prescription drugs, but they're just not taking them appropriately. Um, Or they're taking them, you know, sporadically. Yeah, well, I'll I'll try this one today. No, I won't take it today. You know, it makes me nervous. Right. But it just, the national stat is that like 50% of people don't take their meds properly. And I certainly see that in the hospital setting. Well, for the benefit of you and our listeners, if you have, if you're a loved one, if you have a loved one that is having challenges remembering or trying to be consistent in taking their medications, we can package them in special packaging so that you can help identify when doses are missed easier. So whether it be in a strip package that is time stamped for each dose, or a bubble card that has an outlay of the dates and the times you should take them. If you're trying to help your loved one keep track of their medication, it might make your life a lot easier than filling pill boxes and stuff. So we can talk about that at the medicine center too. But you have in your hand a fun little magnet that has a um, a mnemonic on it, and I love mnemonics. So let's uh, talk about what you have here so that we can learn how to identify some stroke risks and symptoms. If the listeners learn nothing else today, I want them to learn to be fast. You know, be fast about stroke, and, and be fast is a mnemonic. B stands for balance, so sudden balance trouble. The E stands for eyes, so sudden vision changes. The F in fast is for face drooping. The A for arm weakness or leg weakness, but the mnemonic only gives you the A. The S for speech, so sudden speech changes. And then the T is for time to call 911. So I just encourage all of your listeners to be fast about stroke. Can you show that to the Facebook guys? Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to post that up on our website with a link to our show here to make sure that people can um, can learn that because I think um, sometimes when you get more than one or two things, it's hard to remember. But it sounds to me like you can also benefit just for looking for things that are unusual. When you mention speech or mm-hmm. or lack of um, expression um, or certainly droopiness, so very interesting. All right, we like it. I guess we're on our third break. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T A P O N I T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The Half Off and Out by store has been reloaded. Lots of new furniture from a major department store. Also, several pharmacy inventories have just been brought in from a large drug chain. Also, our adult diaper inventory has been increased dramatically. Don't miss these super values. You will regret it. Everything is half off or discounted more. See photos on Facebook or on our website, halfoffhotbuys.com. Half-Off Hot Buy Store, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. 
With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing the signs of stroke with Maria Griffin. Have a question? Call us at 330-450-1480. All right, we've been learning about uh, the signs of a stroke and how to identify them. And I really think it would be valuable if you do the Be Fast one more time. (laughs) Because um, I just feel like it's one of those things that I worry that we have customers that come in the store and don't really understand stroke until after it's happened to someone that they love. And then if you would have been empowered with this knowledge, you would have been able to act faster. So tell us how to be fast. <laughs> I will. But I want to make sure that um, most most patients that suffer a stroke, these symptoms come on suddenly. Um, you know, stroke is not something that takes, you know, weeks to, to come on. It's something you're fine one minute, you're not the next. <clears throat> Um, also stroke can occur during sleep. So Mm. if you ever go to bed fine and you wake up with any of these symptoms, think stroke. Mm. Um, but the be fast, once again, B E F A S T. Becky put this together. Yes, she did. Oh, we have to give a shout out to Becky for putting this thing together. It's beautiful. She she put the beautiful magnets together. So, um, but the, the be fast, the B is for balance, sudden balance change. E is for eyes. So sudden double vision, sudden loss of vision. The F is for face, so face drooping or face weakness. The A is for arms, so ask your family member to stick their arms out in front of them like they're flying. If one of them drifts down, that could be a symptom of stroke. Or if they can't lift it at all, certainly that's a symptom. The S is for speech, whether it's sudden slurred speech or sudden trouble getting words out or maybe sudden trouble understanding speech. And then the T is for time, time to call 911. Fantastic. Okay. um, we got a couple minutes left. Do you want to talk about any exciting research that um, you've been hearing about that can help patients that are affected by stroke? Um, We have uh, a lot of research going on right now with other types of clot-busting therapies. there's a, a drug called tenecteplase that's available in other countries um, for it use with stroke. Unfortunately, it's not uh, available in the United States. It's not approved for use with stroke. It's approved for other uses, but not with stroke. Um, and I look forward to more research that is underway there to see is that you know time window, that four and a half window time window, is that going to be expanded? I also look to see, um, look forward to it just because it is. Uh, supposed to be more cost effective than what our current therapy is and it's supposed to be a lot easier for the nursing uh, side of it the, to administer the medication. But clinical trials, as you know, take many years so I'm not sure when that will all be wrapped hmm. up. That four and a half hour window you mentioned sounds so intimidating because it just seems like it's just not a lot of time when you have a medical event and if you're not near a hospital to begin with and you have to get there and I don't know, it just gives me like stress thinking about it given how quickly you want to get care. So Well, and you certainly don't want to wait, you know, because 
every minute that goes by, you're losing brain cells. You know, there's a phrase in stroke called time is brain. Um, so certainly you don't want to say, oh, well, I got another hour until I hit that four and a half. No, no you want to go right away. And whenever you get to the hospital, we have a whole bunch of evaluations that we need to do to determine if you're even a candidate for those therapies. You know, we have to do a CAT scan of your brain. We have to check your blood pressure. We have to look at some blood studies and get a history from you. So time is of the essence. As hmm. soon as you develop symptoms, come right away. So the clot buster drug is not the first line of defense. Is that what you're telling us? Um, you just got done reeling off a bunch of tests. Okay. Well, we, not, they the, bring me in with a stroke. They're going to plug me into that drug right away? or No. So there's two different types of stroke. You know, the type of stroke where an artery bursts open, sure. if, you know, you have bleeding in your brain, certainly you're not a candidate for uh, a powerful blood thinner will, will make sure. you worse. So that's why we have to do that CAT scan, just to make sure that... Well, that's the first line of defense. Okay. I'm not sure that defense is the right word. Well, it's uh, yeah. if our investigations. It's my yeah. word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> certainly treatment. something we need to rule out. First line of treatment. <laughs> okay. All right. How about you touch on um, some lifestyle things? You know, we talked about... We've talked that there are 10 factors we can affect change on. Have we covered all 10? Well, we've talked about all the different risk okay, factors. Okay. Um, we have, well, not all the risk factors, but, but the more common are the risk factors. Um, truly smoking, alcohol consumption, and, and when many times people don't realize that they're drinking too much. Um, if you look at the guidelines, you know, women are permitted one alcoholic beverage per day. Men are permitted two. Anything more than that is considered to be excessive and it's not uncommon that I'll have a, a patient in front of me that drinks six beers a day and doesn't realize that <laughs> that's excessive. Many times the family or the spouse recognize it as excessive, <laughs> but the patient doesn't mm. think that that's considered excessive and doesn't realize that that's really um, hurting their health. Amazing. Okay. The biggest controversy in the, right now is marijuana, smoking, medical marijuana, Okay. How does that affect the strokes? Well, I do know there is some research going on um, looking at um, medical marijuana and recovery to see what that does there, but that's there's no data there. Um, and I do know that many patients are using medical marijuana for pain. Most strokes are painless. Um, there are a few areas of the brain that if you do have a stroke, you can have a pain syndrome after the stroke. But I will be honest to say that I'm not certain that um, post-stroke chronic pain is one of those that's permitted on that list of uh, diagnoses. I, I don't believe it is. It's interesting that you mentioned doesn't have doesn't always associated with pain after no. the event. So that's. I guess you'd almost think it would be. That's really interesting. And I think that's why whenever folks hurt. have a heart attack, they tend to go to the hospital yeah. right away because it hurts. Yeah. You break a bone, it hurts. You go yeah. to the hospital. Strokes typically painless. And if you just have numbness, they tend to wait. Well, All a, lot, right. a lot of people in that stroke environment probably think, ah, oh, this is just passing. You know, I hit my head or fell in. <laughs> Crazy. Any okay. parting words of wisdom for our listeners? Just to be fast and call 911. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here today and sharing all this great info with us. Thanks, Maria, for coming by. Third time, third trip. Thanks for having me. Okay. Nurse Practitioner, Mercy Stroke Center Coordinator. We'd like to remind our listeners to pledge to make at least one change to reduce the stroke risk. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center Studio Arts and Glass and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis, who controls the controls here. As always... We thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. We see you next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. And don't forget, you can stop by the Medicine Center Pharmacy and have any of our pharmacists check your blood pressure. So know your numbers. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy.
sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.